when people become successful, mm -hmm. okay, they always say, I don't do that anymore. Well, what do you mean you don't do that anymore? Mm -hmm. You should do that and then some. There's so many individuals out there that are so talented in different things that never accomplish anything. Everyone's gonna hit adversity. It's how you deal with that adversity. And the key word is you, not letting somebody else deal with that adversity. You have to deal with that adversity. Need motivation? Watch a top 10 with Believe Nation. What's up at seven? My one word is believe and I believe in you. I believe you have an amazing gift inside you that I wanna see explode out onto the world. So let's get your motivation to a 10 and get you believing in you. Grab a snack and chew on today's lessons from a man who went from immigrating to the United States from India at age four and helping his father dispose of dead bodies at age six to working with elite athletes like Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and Dwayne Wade. He's Tim Grover, and here's my take on his top 10 rules of success. Enjoy. All right, let's kick things off with rule number one, be fueled by failure. We try so hard in our lives to fit in. We try to fit into certain groups, certain frats, certain sororities, you know, among certain friends, yet the people we idolize are most are the ones that stand out. But when you're prepared, there is no fear. There is no fear of failure, okay? Because even if you've walked out of something and you feel like you failed at it, your preparation is so strong that you're gonna take that failure and turn it into the outcome you desire. And most people stop at failure, okay? We've all failed at things. I'm gonna continue to fail at stuff, right? It's the most powerful tool you can use, but it all depends on how you use it. You know, we talk about it in Relentless, okay? A scalpel, okay? In the hands of an individual, it can do unbelievable damage. In the hands of a professional, of a doctor, it saves lives. So it's the same thing with failure. It's how you use it. It's that drive inside of you, okay? It's what we talk about, the dark side. The dark side is filled with failure, but it's the fuel that burns you like something that's never burned inside you before. Rule number two, master your craft. When I started studying, everyone says, oh, you're gonna be a gym teacher. I said, no, I said, I'm gonna work with professional athletes. I knew what I wanted to do. I said, I'm gonna work with, I'm gonna work with professional athletes. So that was my, I, that was the goal I set in my mind and I just said, hey, that, that's gonna take a place in my head. That's the only thing that I wanna do and I gotta figure out a way, to, I gotta figure out a way to get there. So I studied and learned my craft better than anybody else. Did I start with the professional athletes? No, after I graduated, I went to work in a local health club Really, I knew how, I knew everything from a book standpoint, but still, you gotta know how to apply it, okay? So I, you know, worked with anybody I could, any. These are not pros. These aren't pros, I'm talking about housewives, I'm talking about individuals that just wanna get in, uh, just wanna get in shape, people that have had injuries from different sports, kids, anybody, just kind of developing programs, putting, implementing what I've learned, and actually being able to apply it. Mm -hmm. And once I started to uh, look at that craft, I said, okay, now I'm starting to figure out how to, how to actually apply this stuff and how to use it and put the formulas together and put the workouts together and do all these different things. I mean, stuff that they're doing now from a workout standpoint, I was doing 30 years ago. Wow. Was so doing none of the stuff is new to you. None of, I mean, some of the stuff is new. It's different. I stay on top of it. Right. All right, I got to continue to learn, you know, continue to be uh, better myself so I can better my athletes, better my craft. Mm -hmm. But. It's a different, it's just a different way of doing the same, different way of doing the same thing. Like now there's a lot more resources, a lot more education, a lot more testing available. Back then you kind of had to just figure it out. A lot of individuals now, okay, especially in this generation, not only from a training standpoint, but from a knowledge standpoint, they're jumping from one thing to another, yeah. you know, they're using this trainer this week, they're using another trainer next week, you know, they're, they're using this person as a mentor on YouTube, then they're using this person over here, okay, and they're getting all this conflicting information, okay? You gotta, you gotta master what you're going to master, 
people, okay? You have to fit, you have to figure it out. Too many people are jumping from place to place to place. Michael, Kobe, all these individuals, they mastered one aspect of the game. When they mastered that aspect of the game, then they moved to another aspect of the Love game. That. Rule number three, do it all. When people become successful, mm -hmm. okay, they always say, I don't do that anymore. Well, what do you mean you don't do that anymore? Mm -hmm. You should do that and then some. Mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. what do you mean you don't do that anymore? The most successful people know and can do it all. All right, huh. can do it all. Mm -hmm. Okay, Michael, you know what? He never, when he played, he would go around, pick up the towels in the gym, after practice, put the basketball. Really? Put the bas put the basketball. Michael put, Jordan. Michael Jordan. Okay. Kobe did the same thing. Put the basketballs away. Wow. All right. Do just do whatever whatever's supposed mm -hmm. to do. He he packed his uh, got his own game gear together. You know now people have these stylists and so forth. They put their clothes together. Yeah. Michael put his own stuff together. Exactly. It's just like handled his own tickets. Kobe did the same thing. So it's just like hey, just because I'm now the superstar. Yeah. All right. I still wanted, I still have to do the things that got me there because it reminds me wow. of what I did and what it took to get to, to get to this level. Rule number four, sharpen your mind. So if talent's not enough, what is? There's so many individuals out there that are so talented in different things that never accomplish anything. Okay, the world is filled with talented people. You know a lot of them yourselves, okay? and they never accomplish anything. With talent has to come preparation, has to come action, has to come development of being able to take those talents, take those skills, continue to develop them, continue to sharpen them physically, continue to sharpen them mentally, because at some point, your physical talent is going to diminish as a professional athlete. That's just a fact, okay? But what keeps that competitive edge, what keeps you on top is the ability to think and prepare mentally over and over and over again. The body has limitations, the mind does not. We focus so much on what goes on from the neck down that we forget it all starts from here. Everything starts from there. If you're not mentally ready, you're never really physically prepared. And that's where the preparation starts. I firmly believe that everybody in this room, everybody on this planet has a gift. It's your job to figure out what that gift is. Then it becomes your job to decide whether you're going to act on that or not. Everyone sees the work that you put in, but it's what you don't see is gonna determine how far you're gonna get. I, I, I hear stuff all the time, people say, oh, look in the mirror and you'll see why you're not succeeding. I don't believe that, okay? It's what you don't see in the mirror, that's what's holding you back. It's what you're not willing to see is why talent is not enough. And when you, when you finally see it and accept it and decide to work on it, then you can take that next level. Rule number five, start winning. Everyone's gonna hit adversity, Yep. okay? Everyone's gonna hit adversity. It's how you deal with that adversity. And the key word is you, not letting somebody else deal with that adversity. You have to deal with that adversity and how you deal with it. Are you gonna fight through it or are you gonna curl up and just roll over into the corner? It's gonna pretty much determine how the rest of your development from a mental standpoint is going to carry you. You know, people talk about this, uh, uh, people talk about this all the time, you know, losing builds character, okay? Well, how much character do you need? Seriously, all right? You, you know, you want to keep losing and losing. I, hey, listen, I'd rather have a, a person win who has a little bit of, who has a little Craziness. bit of character, yeah. okay, who's a little nuts, and a person that loses all the time and has got, has got great character. At some point, you got to start, you got to start winning. 
You can't always look for other people to help you. Other people got their own problems. They got their own shit they yep. got to deal with. They're trying to achieve their own goals. They're will they are willing to assist, but after a while, okay, if you constantly looking for assistance, constantly looking for help, it's it's on you. Your failure and your success is on you. Rule number six, elevate people around you. A lot of people in business, they're successful for themselves. Yeah. Okay. Or the team, they put up great numbers, but mm. the team never wins. Totally. So All right. True. You know, in business, when the owner or the CEO, when he wins, if he's a cleaner, Everybody in that business, from the top person all the way down to the last person, they all win. Oh, wow. When sports, if you can, you bring out the best out of all your teammates. You elevate not only your teammates, you, envelop, you elevate the equipment manager, mm -hmm. you elevate the equipment manager, the, the staff, the people you have no idea, the people that handle the tickets. Everybody's game is elevated because they have to, because the cleaner is not going to come down to your level. You got to come up to theirs. Rule number seven, seize every opportunity. You have to be prepared to take any and every opportunity that's presented to you. All right, nothing's just gonna happen. You know, everybody say it's all on you. It is all on you. There's other people that can educate you and help you, but you take these different experiences that you learn that stick with you. I mean, you may not remember a whole lot when you were four years old, but there's certain memories, there's certain things. You can use them to either harness you to greatness or you can use them to kind of just keep you where you're at. And most people are just satisfied with ad. There's always a next level. Your definition of greatness and what you want to achieve could be totally different than somebody else's. You know, we always say, no one wants to be first, okay, because they're afraid of the consequences that come with doing something first. You know, we go to Michael Jordan. Everyone, when Michael Jordan took over the uh, Charlotte team, okay, everyone says he's a failure. Well, how can you be a failure when you're the first professional athlete to own a majority of a franchise team? Can't be a failure. You're the first to do something. If you're the first to do something, you can't be listed as a failure. I wanted to be the first to do something, and that was to work with high, high-end professional athletes. Rule number eight, surround yourself with greatness. So when you choose in somebody, when you choose somebody to listen to, and you choose somebody to learn from, and you choose a business partner, you choose a client, they gotta be as crazy, and they gotta be as up as wow. you are. That's how you get success. That's how you know you're gonna be able to push that individual. That's how you know that relationship is gonna last. You know, people talk about in business or think, oh, you gotta find a balance. You gotta find that person. You know, if you're one way, you gotta find a person that's the other way. No, that's bullshit. That's pulling you away from how you want to do things and how, if you're intense, the next person I want is to be as super, in as super intense. Now those people around you, they got to be smarter than you are. Right. You don't want to surround yourself with people that, if you're the smartest person in the room, you need to get more people in the room. Sure. Okay, you should not walk into the room and ever be the smartest person in there. Okay. The people around you have to be much smarter, or at least in certain things. You may have an expertise in one thing, but that other individual better have an expertise that's beyond yours in something in something else. Okay. But from a mind standpoint, you know, MJ was just as f***ed up as I was. Kobe is just as f***ed up as I was from, a, from being the best. Okay, I wanted to be the best at what I do. They wanted to be the best at what they do. All right? So there was an attraction it's, there. It's an attraction, and those are the people that allow you to push them and allow them to, they understand, they want to get, they want to get better. You know, they don't need to be motivated, okay? They're like, you tell them, hey, that's the so interesting. They're not, they're not hiring you to come motivate me. They no. already want it as bad as they, you, so. They want, it. the best of the best already want it more than anybody else. There's a reason they're the best. You know, we, we talked about this earlier at lunch. They're the ones that are, show up to practice early. Okay, they're the ones taking the extra shots. They're the ones doing the wind sprints at the end. They're the ones, you know, getting treatment, taking care of their body. They're showing up, they're showing up on off days. I mean, the you're saying, you're, saying, you're sending the guys home. You're saying you gotta go home. You gotta go, go home. Go you, home got, you, got, you gotta literally, you gotta, you gotta tell them to leave. You don't have to tell them to show up. You gotta tell them to leave. Oh that, 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 that's enough. You know, you have people in your office yeah. and you look at it. You know, how many employees do you have now? We got 4,200 agents. 4,200 agents, okay? Out of 4,200 agents, okay? If you put them all in the, all in the room, 
okay, and you were able to put them all in one shop together, all right, and say your hours were nine to five, okay, you'd have 4,200 people in here from nine, from nine to five o'clock, uh, from five o'clock. After five o'clock, you may have 500. After seven o'clock, you may have 200. After nine o'clock, you may have five. And then guess what? At the end of the day, there's gonna be one light left on. Maybe two, yours and somebody else's. That person's as fucked up as you are. <laughs> okay. I love that. Right? But you can count on that individual. I love that. You can count on that individual. Rule number nine, my personal favorite, have intensity. So we're both workout guys. We like right. to go to the we yep. like to we like to go yep. to the gym. All right. How many times have you seen people in the gym? They spend more time on their playlist, yeah, yeah. taking pictures, doing stuff instead of getting their work, instead of getting their workout done. So true. It, it's yeah. just like you know. And here's the thing. All right, you're a very intense person. I can yeah, tell. Right. Okay, I'm a very intense right. person. Yep. All right, we value our time. Yes. Okay. How do you get results in the gym? It isn't about spending two to three hours working out. People say, I spent three hours. You didn't spend three hours. You may, by the time you pulled into the parking lot, the, by the time you changed, <laughs> got some breakfast, yeah. put your workout clothes on, talked yeah. to eight people, did all that stuff, you were there for, you were there for three hours. So you, did your, you, did your, you did your three hours. Yeah. No intensity. Yeah. All right, all right. People talk about, hey, you know, you post a couple of workout things, mm -hmm. you've seen it, you're a buff guy, or you're, next, you're in great shape. Mm -hmm. All right, people say, Ed, I wanna look, I wanna look like you, mm -hmm. all right? They don't see what it takes mm -hmm. to look like you. Mm -hmm. Not only in the gym, outside of mm -hmm. the gym. Mm -hmm. The intensity that's there. Mm -hmm. You're in the gym and I'm assuming you work out with music, you had yeah. some headphones on, mm -hmm. you gotta get a certain amount of stuff done in a certain amount of mm -hmm. time. Or you're in this intense life, somebody comes up to you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and you don't wanna be rude to them, so yeah. now you take your headphones yeah. off, they yeah. ask you a question, they wanna take a picture with you, oh, yeah. I recognize yeah. you from so and so right. on. All right, and then, then the question is, how do I get to look like? Well, the one way you get to look like me is leave me there for long. Stop asking so me these I questions, can do, exactly. I can do, and, and start hitting, start yeah. hitting the weights, start, start lifting. Yeah. It's the intensity that you have, it has to be in everything you do. You have to be an intense person yeah. in your workouts. The way you, the way you eat, okay, mm -hmm. that, that's intensity. How do, how do you fuel up your metabolism rate so you're burning these calories so you can get that definition? That's, inten that's an intensity. Yeah. How do you get to be successful? You know, oh man, he, he or she, he's so intense. No, you know what, he and she, that's how you're supposed to be. You're right. at a different level. Right. And that's why I said the, the intensity is so, it's so important. It's what really separates those individuals. And you can't get into that zone and you can't get arms and abs like Ed. All right, you can't do it unless you have that intensity and you're willing to block out the distractions. We have so much access now to information. Ooh, yep. It's literally at our fingertips, yep. you know. Everything, okay. Why are more individuals doing less? You're right. Because they're easily distracted. distracted. Yep. And rule number 10, the last one before some very special bonus rules, be relentless. Relentless is more than just a mindset. It's a skill set, it's a mindset, it's a way to kick ass. We talk about kicking ass and taking names. Well, when you're relentless, you've kicked so much ass, you can't remember all the names because it becomes irrelevant. The name that they remember is your name. That's what relentless is being about. It's not about others, it's about yourself. It's about taking yourself to a level that only few people can achieve. The mindset is completely different. It's about capturing other people's hearts and not letting them go. It's learning to step on their throat. It's about killing the competition. Your fiercest competitors are cutthroat individuals. All they want to do is win, and they want to win over and over again. It's not just a one-time thing. Success is repeated many, many times. You can have a skill set to do a lot of things, okay? You can train, you can read a manual, you can do all these different things, but a skill set only works if you have that mindset. Everyone talks about, I got passion, I got inner drive. You know what passion and inner drive is? It's absolutely nothing unless there's an action, a relentless action that follows it. And if you have that relentless action that follows your passion, that follows that inner drive you have, then you get that end result. Other than that, you just have a bunch of emotions that mean nothing. 
Now I've got three very special Tim Grover clips around how to make no excuses, preparation is key, and make your instincts trust you. But before that, I wanna know, what did you learn from this video? What was the single biggest lesson that you're gonna take away from and apply somehow to your life, your business? Leave it in the comments below. When you write it down, it's much more likely to actually happen. So put it in the comments below. I wanna see what you have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love, I'll see you soon, and enjoy the bonus clips. In professional sports, everybody always said, oh, he's a closer, and they said that's the top level of a, of a competitor. And I always thought, well, working with Michael, I said, comparing him to everybody else and putting him in a category as a closer along with all the other players, I said, that's an insult. I see what this man goes through. I've seen his uh, preparation. Uh, you know, I don't like to use the word legendary with him because he's not a legend, he's an icon. There's a lot of legends out there. There's only one icon. He's an icon, okay? Sure. So, when you talk about these different individuals, we have a cooler as an individual, and this could not only be in sports, it could be in work and so forth. And if you can identify these personalities as a boss or as a director, it will help your company succeed tremendously because you know what you can get out of these individuals. So a cooler is a person that you give a job to and you're gonna get the desired result. You're not going to get anything exceptional. You're not going to get anything outstanding. You're going to give them something to do. They're going to deliver a result that's expected. Okay. And there's not and there's nothing wrong with that. Every team and every organization needs needs coolers on them. Then when we have closers, closers are a level above that. Closers are people that you give a task to, you give an assignment, they're gonna deliver you that end result majority of the time as long as too many variables are not thrown at them. A cleaner is an individual, what we call a don't think person. They're so well prepared at what they do. They spend hours and hours of time, years of getting prepared that no matter what's thrown at them, they're going to deliver that end result over and over again. Their instincts are so dead on that no matter what variable, what problem they can adjust on the fly and have the ability to get themselves in what we call the zone. The problem is, in order to be able to put yourself in the zone, preparation is the key. How many times have you watched sports and they said, the person's thinking too much. Stop thinking. Yep. Stop thinking. Just go out Just go out and play. Well, yep. what happens when you tell an individual to stop thinking? What's the first thing they do? Think. They start thinking. Yep. Exactly. Do you know how many hours and years of preparation go into not being able to not to think about something, okay. it takes years and years and years of doing the same thing over and over and over again. Okay. To Why learn does, how not to think. Not to think. Wow. To be able to take a, to take a reaction yeah. and turn it into a reflex. That's what the greatest can do. Most people react to things, okay? The greatest, it's, it's an instinct. It's, it's impulsive. It's innate. It becomes, a, it becomes a reflex. You know, we talk about this. Listen, trust your instincts. That's what closers do. You know what cleaners do? Mm. Their instincts trust them. I got this. I'll give you a great example about that, and we'll pick up the other thing. All right. Doug Collins. Coach of the Bulls yep. is drawing up this play. Okay, last second play, he's drawing. It's the Cleveland play, the one he beat. Uh, Elo, in, in, Elo, right? Yep. So he's drawing up all. He's drawing up this play, all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. He's already races it. Michael turns around and said, "Hey, give me the ball. Get the fuck out the way." In the timeout. Yeah. After the timeout, you know, before I jog, he goes, "Give me the ball. Get the fuck out the way." Okay. That's that's the don't think. Okay. That's the point where hey, listen. My instincts trust me. Give me the ball, just get the hell out the way, I'm winning this game. Mm. I'm winning this game. But that game winning shot wasn't made there. It was made many years right. before. In the, you know, in the dark gym, by himself, with somebody rebounding the ball, whether it was me or somebody else, shooting that same shot over and over and over and over again, saying, no, if I get to this spot, I don't care if there's 10 hands in front of me. If I get to this spot, the shot's going in because I've done it 
over and over again. Talk just for a second, because this just blew my mind. Is your dad, they come from India, right? Yes. Is that right? Mm-hmm. And your dad, um, you're in the cab. You just get here. You're in you the cab. just get here, yep. And my mom's already here. Okay. Established Tell herself as a nurse. Okay. And well, my dad, it was easier for my it was easier for my mom to get her license here mm. as a nurse practitioner than it was for my dad to get his license as a as a doctor, mm. all right, an MD. Mm. And he wasn't able to get a, wasn't able to get the license. We still came over. We're sitting in the cab, and he's counting the money, and the meter gets to I forget what the number was, and my dad tells the cab driver, "Stop." Mm. And you're a little boy, right? We're a little boy. Yeah. I was four years old. <sighs> he said, "Stop," mm. and we're like, "What's going on?" Mm. And my dad goes, hey, listen, we're in a new country. I want you to enjoy the scenery. So we get out, we grab all the luggage. Mm. Excuse me, I get real emotional. That's awesome. That's awesome. Mm. And we're walking down the street. Mm. Mm. That's awesome, brother. You got it. Yeah. We're walking down the street with his luggage mm. and he's showing us the different scenery and so forth. Mm. Never knew he didn't have any more money in his pocket. Wow. Wow. Amazing. But he got us here. Got you there. That's so powerful. You imagine that little boy walking down that street turns out to be you. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Your it dad is. sowing those seeds into you. Yeah. And there's moments like that that define you. Yeah. As long as you remember them. They can define you both ways. Mm. You can look at it and say, you know what? You can use that as an excuse. My dad came to this country. He didn't have any money. He never gave me anything. He never mm. did this. And people do that. Mm. Or you can look at it and say, he gave us everything. Raise your standard. Apple at the core, its core value is that we believe that people with passion can change the world for the better. Not one drop of my self-worth depends on your acceptance of me. I don't ever give up. I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. Hey, Believe Nation, if you want to see my all-time favorite top 10 rules of success, I have a very special secret video for you. These are the individual clips that I have personally learned the most from and applied to my life and my business. Check the link in the description for details.